Hi. So again, here we are with our derivation of time dilation and length contraction in special relativity. And in the last video, we um, used this little thought experiment to derive these equations for this experiment. Here again, we have the little person with delta t compared to delta t naught that goes on um, uh, with somebody in this reference frame of the spacecraft with this light clock over here. And we got these relationships. L squared plus d squared equals s squared. 2s equals c delta t, and 2l equals v delta t. Now for the mathematics of deriving time derivation and eventually length contraction. We start with s squared equals l squared plus d squared. And we can write s equals the square root of l squared plus d squared. Simple enough, okay? And now, um, for the point of, of getting this into it, because obviously all three of these equations are going to be used if I put them up there. Um, so what we're just going to do is multiply both sides by 2 over here, and we get 2s equals 2 times the square root of l squared plus d squared, which can also equals c delta t, right? Because c delta t equals 2s. So let's distribute the 2 over here. So we get the square root of 4l squared plus 4d squared equals c delta t. Okay? And now let's replace, let's take this equation over here where we have 2l equals v delta t and write it as l equals v delta t over 2. Again, this is the, uh, the whole length, which is 2l, equals the velocity of the spacecraft times delta t observed by this person. Easy enough, right? Okay. So I can erase that and put that in there. So c delta t equals the square root of 4 times v delta t over 2 plus 4d squared. Okay. Um, and actually, uh, I forgot one other thing, one other equation up here. Delta t naught equals 2d over c. Just we, we need that equation over there. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Right? Because this is the. Okay, right? Explain that. Okay. Now I'm going to square both sides and I get c squared delta t squared equals. Um, sorry, this is squared. Equals 4 v delta t over 2 squared plus 4 d squared. Right? Okay? And then c squared delta t squared equals, I'm going to square this and distribute. So that when this squared becomes, here, let me rewrite that. When we square this over here, it becomes v squared delta t squared over 4. Four, four scans. So v squared delta t squared plus 4 d squared, right? Okay. Let me erase all this. Okay, so c squared delta t squared equals v squared delta t squared plus 4d squared. Alright. Now I'm going to isolate this variable. So c squared delta t squared minus v squared delta t squared equals 4d squared delta t squared times c squared minus v squared equals 4d squared. See what I did there? I subtracted v squared delta t squared from both sides and then divided the delta t squared up, okay? Delta t squared equals 4d squared all over c squared minus v squared, right? Okay, simple enough. Now I'm going to do a little bit of uh, mathematical trickery over here. On this side, I'm going to multiply by 1 over c squared over 1 over c squared. Um, I can do that again because this is just, you know, this whole value over here is just 1, but you'll see why I do that in a minute. So delta t squared equals what this top would be 4d squared over c squared, right? Over, when I distribute this 1 over c squared, sorry, I made a little mark. I distribute this 1 over c squared. I get c 
c squared over c squared minus v squared over c squared, which becomes delta t squared equals 4d squared over c squared over 1 minus v squared over c squared. And for those of you who are not new to relativity, this will start to look very familiar, and you'll see in a minute. Okay. So, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, okay? I get delta t equals 4 d, here wait, no, sorry. Equals, sorry, 2 d over c, right? Because the square root of 4 is 2, square root of d is d, uh, square root of d squared is d, square root of c squared is c, over square root 1 minus v squared over c squared. And we know that delta t naught equals 2d over c. So we just replace that, this with this, and we get delta t equals delta t naught all over the square root 1 minus v squared over c squared. And that is time dilation. What that means, essentially, is that since the velocity will never be equal to or greater than the speed of light, this value will always be less than 1 because this is you know, v over c squared. And since v will always be less than c, that value will always be a fraction uh, less than 1. And then you square that, still a number less than 1. 1 minus a number less than 1 is still a number less than 1. Square root of that is still a number less than 1. So you have delta t naught over number, a number less than 1 equals delta t. Say this was 10 seconds, and this value over here came to be 0.8. 10 times 0.8 would give you 8 which means that after 10 seconds has gone by for this observer in one reference frame, some, the time that has gone by for someone else in another reference frame would be 8 seconds, which is less. That is time dilation. Okay, and now, one quick look at that, ta-da, there we go. And now I'm going to get rid of this and show you length contraction. So we've derived time dilation from this thought experiment. So delta t equals delta t naught over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, right? Okay, now, let's imagine this. Let's have two points, point O, point P, um, and you have a little observer over here, um, and then you have the spacecraft over here. Fire, traveling at a velocity, okay, between these two points, okay? And let's call the distance of this this is from the perspective of this person, by the way. Um, we're going to call this L. Okay? No, sorry, we're going to call L naught. Okay, and again, what the naught means is delta T naught is the time that has gone by for somebody in that reference frame, for a clock in that reference frame. So this is the length for somebody in that same reference frame. This points, these points O and P, for all respective purposes, are stationary in space, and so is this person. So he's in the same reference frame as those two points. So the length between them is L naught is the true length, as that is true time. Now from the perspective of this spacecraft, I'm actually going to draw this. Um, I'm going to draw it right here. O, P, and V going that way. And now it's the perspective of this spacecraft, the person. And we're going to call this length L, okay? Um, and there's a reason that I actually drew it that way, and you'll see in a minute why. Um, so now there are two points in space, two stationary points in place, space, that are one reference frame, and now somebody in a different reference frame is traveling between them, okay? And what actually ends up happening is that the length between those two points contracts. Likewise, uh, this person standing stationary would see the spacecraft, the length of the spacecraft, because it's in a different reference frame, contract, um, while the person on the spacecraft would see the points in space contract in distance. And this is why. Uh, we know the equation for distance is, in a simple case like this, constant velocity, everything, is velocity times time. So for this person, they would say that the length that this spacecraft traveled in time delta t equals the length, I mean equals uh, the velocity of the spacecraft times delta t. This person would say that the length that they saw equals the time that they recorded, delta t naught, times their velocity. Now again in this, uh, in this case um, velocity is, is something that is, is sort of invariant that um, if I see a spacecraft going at 10 meters per second 
Uh, that's slow, but if I, okay, if I see a car going 10 meters per second next to me, um, they're going to look at me, and no, sorry, let me start again. If I see a car driving by me at 10 meters per second, I'm going to say, that car is moving away from me from 10, in ten, at 10 meters per second. And if somebody is in a car driving past me at 10 meters per second, they're going to look at me and say, I'm moving away from them at 10 meters per second. So velocity is sort of the same over here. All right? So let's solve for that variance. L naught over delta t equals v, and L over delta t naught equals v. Since these two are the same, we can say L naught over delta t equals L over delta t naught. Correct? Um, we know that delta t naught equals delta t times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. We're going to use this equation over here. We're going to say L naught over delta t equals L over delta t the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Delta t's cancel, and we get L naught equals L over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Or properly, as it is written, L naught square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared equals L. Again, we know that, uh, so this is, this is line contraction. We know that this value will always be less than 1, this value will always be less than 1, and this value will always be less than 1. So if you have the true length of something, you're going to be multiplying by a value less than 1, and you're going to get a contracted length. So say this was 10 meters, and this was this factor um, came out to be 0.8, and then 10 times 0.8 would be 8 meters, which means that the distance that this person would perceive, L, would be 8, while the distance that this person would perceive would be 10, and that is length contraction. The faster you go, um, the shorter lengths appear to be. Um, the two basic concepts over here, just conceptually, that the faster you go, the slower time um, appears to go by, and the faster you go, the shorter lengths appear to be. And those are the differences in reference frame. And the last thing I'm going to show you whoops, is um, a way of rewrite, rewriting these, um, where this, 1 over the square root, 1 minus v squared over c squared, is the Lorenz factor denoted by gamma, such that delta t equals delta t naught gamma and L naught over gamma equals L. Um, these are just ways to show this Lorentz factor. It shows up a lot in special relativity. And that is length contraction and time dilation. Thank you very much.